lot of questions. Um, so how this is going to work is uh, I have a few moderated questions here that I'll be asking our guests. And then about 30 minutes in, we'll open it up for audience Q&A, which will be about down this aisle here. And I'll have my runner um, helping you out with those questions. OK, first, uh, our favorite tea enjoying, wisdom sharing, Uncle Iroh. Please welcome Greg Baldwin. Coming up, your favorite fire-flinging and totally emotionally stable Azula, Gray Delil Griffin. Next, we have our twirling, cartwheeling, and wise beyond her, beyond her years, Ty Lee, Olivia Hack. chair over there. I'll be right you know what? Yeah. We got, we got a chair situation. Hang on. I'm not getting up. <laughs> Always an afterthought. It's fine. <laughs> oh, thanks, Greg. Give it up for Greg. I'm a southern gentleman. <laughs> oh, we'll figure this out. All right. Next. Uh, she's strong uh, fiercely minded, she's the avatar and you gotta deal with it. Please welcome Janet Varney. <laughs> and of course, last but not le least, we have our rock crushing, fun loving, and friend teasing Toph Bay Fong. Please welcome Michaela Jill Murphy. Cute. I didn't see yes. it. Yes. Someone knit us these little cats, which is a, for our characters, which are adorable. So these are our names. I got a now. Naga. <laughs> so cute. I like also, the pardon me, I'm eating an orange because hole. blood sugar is low. Oh. Sorry. I'm Show just it the butthole. Show the butthole. Look at the butthole. It's pink. <laughs> oh. oh, man. You know, I, for a second I was like, maybe it should have been green, but this just makes so much more sense. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, it's great. Phenomenal attention to detail. <laughs> It's not every day you get to hear Azula say, show them the butthole. <laughs> yes, it is. I say that every day. Okay. <laughs> I feel like a thousand people will remember that forever. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for coming and sharing a piece of your weekend with us as well. I always like to start off with a little fun question. What's, um, if you could describe it in one or two words, what's the thing that's made you happy this week? That's made us happy this week? That's made you happy this week. In one or two words. One or two words. Meeting Better you. Yeah. <laughs> Southern food. The bar at the hotel. <laughs> that was four words, Greg. He's drunk. He's drunk. Give him a break. Uh, five words. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm too intense over here. I'm thinking of one to two words. Uh, in a more meta sense, communication. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Avatar family. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, since there's so many of us, I feel like we'll only do like a handful before we open up for audience Q&A. So let's see who I shall start with. Right. Let's see. Janet. So um, your situation was a little bit unique from the others in that both you and Cora carried this legacy, existing legacy on your shoulders. I'm sure everyone here agrees that um, you really delivered on this character and her story and her emotion. Do you feel like um, if you could do Cora again, it'd be, you would do it a different way or a different motivation or a different take on her? I mean, I wouldn't because I feel like everything I did was born out of the writing and out of, you know, Mike and Brian and, the, and, and Andrea Romano, who's such an amazing director that we all got the chance to work with 
Um, and, and so, you know, that was, I had to put my love of the first series aside because it's so intimidating yes. to love something that much and want to, you know, bring something good to the next thing. Um, so it, I wouldn't change anything just because it was such a group effort and um, it was a, a total dream come true. It really was. Wonderful. And then you also have like an immediate family too to support you through that journey too. Absolutely. And Nickelodeon, you know, they love having people record together as a group. So as much as possible, um, both series recorded together and it, it's, it's, it just makes a difference. It's really fun. Wonderful. Okay, next one is for Greg. You see, awesome. Um, so with all of the wisdom that Uncle Iroh has shared from his experiences and from his life, it, I'm sure it's common to think that it's always him that doles out wisdom and insight and advice, but I'm sure that's not always the case. What lessons, what lessons or values do you feel Iro may have learned from his other, his more younger peers? Well, you know, I, I uh, it's interesting that the longer that I, I mean, people expect me sometimes to have, you know, Iro level wisdom, and I don't. You know, I'm not Uncle Iro. I'm a voice actor named Greg Baldwin who likes to drink. So, you know, there's that. Uh, but I do, I do think I have as much wisdom as any 62-year-old who's been paying attention has. And, and I will say that the longer that I have voiced the character and I sort of lived in this Iroh-adjacent world, where I, I literally have memorized most of his quotes, and I cannot tell you how many times those have come in handy in my own life, and I, I do find that just as Iroh makes Zuko a better version of himself, he makes fans better versions of themselves, he's actually made me a better version of myself. I, uh, I am without a doubt a better and a kinder human being because I've been blessed with the opportunity to voice this amazing role. So I do find the older I get, the more Iroh-like I actually, in an odd way, become. Uh, but, I, but I would ask, if I, if I start to grow a top knot, somebody just stop me because, you know, <laughs> that's, that's getting sort of ridiculous, you know. And, and as far as any, if, if I could impart any wisdom, because people expect wisdom from me, <laughs> Which is, oh, you poor suckers. Uh, if I've learned anything in my life, it is this lesson. When I, when I was much younger, I was very self-conscious about the way I looked. I, uh, I would never dance. My wife would say, dance, you know, I don't want to dance. Everyone's looking at me. It took me all of these years to realize that no one was looking at me. And so if I could give any advice to my younger self or any wisdom to you, it's this. Dance. Sing loud and dance whenever you get the opportunity. And, and tell a joke now and again as well, I think, you know. And, and one more, remember to drink your tea. Kila. <laughs> we will always have My motto is dance like no one's watching. Oh. Baby, no, dance like people are watching. Babysit like no one's watching. <laughs> Just do whatever you want. Thank you, Gray. And since uh, I'm on you, uh, I'd like to ask you a question. So your your path to your path to voiceover is is so interesting. You credit your family, your father, for your love of country music, uh, and you sang gospel for church. And then you got into stand-up comedy. You did imitations and impressions that landed you uh, with some advice to take voiceover lessons. Um, and you did that alongside your growing musical career. So what do you feel like was a, a common theme in all these different mediums that you kept pu pulling from that leave such an strong Im impression for you that you felt like you had to like explore further with like this genre of music or this kind of acting? We can't hear each other at all. At all, we're it's really, really strange. We are, we are always hoping you guys can hear us because we are like re lip reading up yeah, we're here. Like we're dead, like, yeah. and what did you say? <laughs> she's doing a great job too, but I just, I, I think she said, what are the common themes between all the different Yeah, the, yeah, thank you so much. I'm gonna try to streamline this. Not your Appreciate fault. that. Yeah, you, you've explored different types of music and exploration, so alongside like voice acting and music, what are some of the common themes that you're kind of pulling from them? Wow. Um, I had a really tumultuous relationship with my mother. <laughs> oh, oh. 
Is that better? Hi, hi, yes. God. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take back everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I can. We can hear. Yo, maybe. Can you hear? Can yeah. you hear yourself better? That's can you hear better. me now? I think that's a little better. Oh yeah. Can you talk? You talk. Okay. Testing, testing. Oh, so much. Yeah, oh my better. gosh. Yay! Yeah. Praise the heavens. Okay. That's okay. the one time Praise I'm gonna thank, thank God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hallelujah. Yes, I had a very tumultuous relationship with my mother. I still do. It's up and down, you know, depending on, you know, just different circumstances. But um, that's why I draw a lot from with Azula. My own mother thought I was a monster. She was right, of course, but it still hurt. Um, but so I write a lot of songs inspired by my mother. And I, you know, I do a lot of jokes about my mother because she's not going to watch my comedy anyway. So she's, not, she's really religious, so she won't ever see my jokes. Um, yeah, it's kind of, there's kind of a safety and a liberation in not talking to your mom. But we're back together for Mother's Day. We got back together and things went okay. Um, so yeah, I would think the, it's not funny because my dad's like, I've always been there for you through your whole life and you never write songs about me. You only write songs about your mom. <laughs> so anyway, it's, but I've written a couple songs about my dad. Um, anyway, they're always sweet. But yeah, I guess it would be the mother thing for me. Hmm. Yeah, she's, it, you know when someone, you want their acceptance so much because every time I send her a song or I do something, like she just won't give me that. She'll go, oh, I just didn't like that. I, that sounds oh. like too much like this other thing. And you know, she's just very critical on it. But it's like, you know, when you go into a room, like my friend will say like, I'll go to a party and everyone loves me except for this one person. So instead of talking to the people who love me, I just spend all my time trying to convince that one person that I'm a worthy person to like. And man, I can feel that. I feel that, you know, but, but it also fuels me to do all these things. Like I probably wouldn't be fueled if I wasn't trying to prove to my mother that I <laughs> deserve worthiness. Anyway, but yeah, so mom. <laughs> yeah. So what, what I'm hearing from that is like your the, meet, the family that you have can play such an important role in your own personal development and how you portray that on all these different characters. Yes, absolutely. Fair. And I try so hard to be there. For, I'm a mother. I have three children, and I'm doing it by myself. And, and I mean, if I miss one event or everything they bring me, that sometimes they could, bring, they could bring me like a little piece of poop, and I'd be like, oh, my gosh, this is the most amazing little piece of poop. You did it. Yay. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> But that's the way. I mean, that's that's the way to do it, right? <laughs> Wonderful. And then I have one for Olivia. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're not in trouble. So as someone with potentially the earliest start um, to their performance career, I, I learned that your first commercial spot when, when, was when you were eight months old. Yes. <laughs> Yep. Already, already oh, got yeah. that link, that LinkedIn, very, IMDb page. And then a very, very, very short career in child modeling, yes. Wow. <laughs> so, like, with that perspective of, like, um, kind of having that early start in, in this industry with performance, what kind, of skills or pers what kind of skills or perspectives from that experience has, like, stayed with you now? Oh, God. Um, I mean, when you've been in the industry a long time, you see people go up, you see people go down. You see careers go up and down, um, and it's really just about, uh, one of my friends who's a, a well-known voice actress wrote me in the other day, and she goes, will I ever get on a show that's like popular at cons again, you know? And, and I said, yeah, you just gotta stick with it, you know? And really that's the trick is like, you just gotta stay at the table, and if you stay at the table long enough, the chips will come your way. But they may only come your way every 10 years, right? Or every 20 years, or whatever. Right. Like, you I never that thought Avatar would be successful again, right? Like, yeah, you just don't know, right? So I, so I think the thing in, in just watching people, you know, like that, uh, it's all cyclical, but um, it's just staying at the table, really. Um, and also, uh, you know, your reputation's all you have, right? And so, and your good name is all you have. So just being professional, I don't know, showing up and, and being kind and, and yeah, I don't know. That's, that's lovely. That's kind of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are like skills that are applicable to like any career, any uh, absolutely. job. Absolutely, it's just really just sticking with it. But it's, um, you know, it's a privilege to be able to stick with it because as actors, there's this misconception that we make a lot of money and all these things so a lot of people they don't stick with it because they can't afford to you know they gotta go and they gotta get the regular job and all that stuff so I've just had um the privilege of like uh I mean like I live with my dad to save money do you know what I mean so that I can keep making my art and stuff like that so um yeah just things like that just sticking with it I don't know oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm also hearing like such a yes. strong level like resilience and like 
understanding what your values are and how you're going to prioritize them in like your personal life and in your career as For well. For sure. And some of it, look, there's so much luck. I mean, there's talent, absolutely, but I know a lot of talented people who don't work, you know? And so, so much of that is just luck. And uh, yeah, I've just been lucky. I've, uh, I've been very lucky, yeah. Yeah. I never forget where you came from because I remember moving to LA and got my, I got an agent and everything and then I was I got my first voiceover audition. I was so happy just to have an audition. I was like, oh, I have an audition, I have an audition. I was telling everybody, I have an audition, you know, and then after, you know, decades in the business, I was like sort of annoyed that I had to drive to this casting office. It was like across, you know, it took me a couple, you know, an hour and a half in traffic and everything. And I was like, Ugh, I don't know, I could drive all the way here. And then I saw, I used to clean houses when I moved to LA. I, I cleaned like offices and houses and I was waiting, you know, waiting tables and just doing all these judging and singing telegrams. And I had to and when I was cleaning, I had to bring all my buckets and all my stuff with me, and I didn't have a car. It was just awful. Anyway, but I looked over, and there was this woman at the bus stop with all of her cleaning stuff, and I just thought, like, like just you're a doing wake up what reminder. you want to do. You have this amazing career. Why don't you shut up and just be grateful because you could be right there or back there again. So just be yeah. here now and be grateful. That's so. un yeah, it's understandable, too, that you're caught up in the moment. It's important to take time to also reflect on the good fortune that you have. Yeah. All right. Um, and tip okay. your hotel uh, staff who has to clean always. up. Yes. Just even like anything. I mean, yes. it's people are, I was always so happy to get a tip. And, and not a lot of people, people don't think that that's like a thing yeah. has to do. Tip your hotel, wait. And yes. I always put the do not disturb so they don't even have to do any work. They just do that too. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting, we're getting advice and life tips it. over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, um, Kayla. So uh, you were featured in an in a article early this year about what you would say to Toph in real life. Um, and, you, and you said you would, oh, it was like, that's a face of, do you remember? No, yeah, remind me, okay. please. You had said uh, that you would say to Toph that you can love a little bit more. Not everybody is going to like close you off. Not everyone's out to get you. Could you expand a little bit more of, of what you meant by that? Mm, sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun. I think we get that question somewhat often about like if you were to hang out with your character for a day or if you were able to give your character a piece of advice, stuff like that. So there's been a couple different answers, so I was unsure which oh. thing had been pulled from. Uh, I definitely, you know, we all have kind of interesting different backstories of like figuring life out in Los Angeles. And I'm an only child of a single mother and we were like a team and we were so used to just doing things as a team and we, you know, we carry our own weight. <laughs> Uh, and so I think getting into high school and college, that's where I started to run into like, hey, you literally can't do things by yourself. You can't do life by yourself. You need to rely on people. You need to rely on classmates. You need to rely on peers. You need to reach out to teachers, create relationships. And I think that was honestly the maybe not successful, but definitely the most well-learned lesson in undergrad for me. Because uh, I was like, how do I navigate like maintaining and making friendships um, without like over sharing like upon first meeting and without being a bitch. So uh, I just think it's kind of takes a, a learning curve. And so that is what I would tell her because we kind of watch her trajectory through Cora and you know, she ends up being a mom, albeit maybe a questionable one. Uh, and we don't really know what the family dynamic situation was. We never really heard about a father figure. Right. And then Toph kind of pieces out after she's police chief and like runs away to the swamps and like, she's like, I'm done. Uh, so I think a lot of that was probably because she had a hard time making those connections. She had that kind of the rift with Katara at the yeah. beginning. And yeah. I think it was just hard for her to trust because she was raised in what was supposed to be a family, like loving environment, pretty isolated, She's constantly shut down, constantly, you can't do anything, you can't, you can't, you can't, no. Uh, and so I think it's just a hard lesson, but that's why I would tell her that. Because then it, life gets so much better when you have yeah. friends and you like have people in your life. So yeah, that's, that's why probably. I that. share that. Share the way, yeah. rely on your friends exactly. and your community for tough times. Yeah. Thank you. Um, i like to ask, uh, were there, and this is for anyone who's interested, were there any scenes that left such an impression on you that I would do this again in a heartbeat? Greg? From the show, I mean, there, my, my predecessor did all the really good work, but 
of, of the work that I did, and I would do that scene again in a heartbeat, would be the scene where it's... What, usually I hate listening to myself in the show because, again, I'm comparing my own voice to Mako's voice. And some people, oh, I, can, I can't tell the difference. Well, I can tell the difference, let me tell you right now. But I am very proud of the scene in the tent where Zuko comes to Uncle Iroh and you think Uncle Iroh's going to be angry with him and he brings him into that bear hug and he says, I was never angry with you. I was sad because I thought you had lost your way. And I, I love that scene so much. And, and I, th I think this is one of the reasons why we still talk about Avatar all these years later. It was never dumbed down for kids. What is that scene about? Well, that scene is really about grace and forgiveness. The, uh, the leaves from the vine scene isn't really about death, although it is, it's about grief, which is a lot more complicated than death. And indeed, you're dealing with genocide, you know, from episode one. And I truly think that that's, that's one of the reasons why we're still talking about it. And I think one of the things that happened when Netflix aired the show is that people who watched the show as kids suddenly revisited the show and you go, oh my gosh, this is so much deeper than I even realized it was back when I was 12. And so, yeah, I think, and I also, if I may, I'd like to thank God this situation here is a lot better now. We yeah. can all hear each other. Oh, my God. So it's really such a better good. panel thank than you. yesterday. Thank God. God. Sorry, thank yesterday. you, God. I'm sorry. Thanks, God. <laughs> thank you, sound. Anyone else? That are like, there's a scene that are like, yeah, I'll do it again. That was great. Yeah. I, don't, I feel like it's any time... I'm in the studio. I, ha I have a little moment like uh, that you have sometimes, Gray, where if life is crazy and I'm trying to squeeze in an audition or even just going to the job, sometimes if I wake up like a little extra tired or I'm like nervous about my throat not cooperating, whatever. And then I'm like in the booth and as soon as we're like in the middle of just doing the thing, I think almost every time, regardless of the project, but Avatar included, there's just like a warmth of like, I'm doing the thing. It's happening. Cool. Yeah, and so there's almost just like a relief and then like a touch back down to reality somewhere in the session where I'm just like, this is cool that I get to do this. Yeah. So I feel like there wasn't one moment, but like, I don't just know. the whole experience. Maybe, honestly, <laughs> it wasn't in the show, but every time I had to buzz the buzzer for them to open the front gate to the studio to let me in, it was like, ha <laughs> We get to push the button again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they know I'm coming. I'm not a random person. And they're not like, going to cool. send me away. I, yeah, I, 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 you belong me. here. We don't want any. I love that scene in the episode The Beach where they're all around the campfire. Oh, yeah. Because there's so much. Um, someone was talking about that scene today. And they were like, oh, I love that scene for you. And I was like, well, I actually got to act. Not that it's not acting, but it's very emotive, you know. Yeah. And I love origin stories just in any show or movie and so you get a lot of um, origin story in that and a lot of kind of back and forth and I like big cast recordings as opposed to just kind of solo stuff yeah. and so to get to really act with other actors in that scene is nice and, and play off each other kind of back and forth quickly you know and yeah of course me, you get to read each other's social cues really like read the vibe and go off of that because yeah, that's also something that um, some people may not know too is like even if you're one of a set of characters in the show sometimes you're recording by yourself and you have to be able to to be able to perform as if like there's a back and forth there's a dialogue going on so that's like an additional challenge too yeah. to convey that emotion um, okay I think it's almost time I'll have I'm gonna do one more question but now is a time where if you have a question, line up line up a burning question go, go, go. for one of our guests sprint. we do have an audience Q&A mic don't, sprint. don't run over each other <laughs> um, some ground rules for your question please make sure they're they're appropriate they're kind that they're um, family friendly and only one question per person sometimes what? People yeah, don't don't double don't, don't double dip. We may also just since there are so many of you have like one of us answer. So just as a heads up, so we can try to get through as many questions yeah. as possible. Yeah, we'll yes. try and rapid fire. We'll, yeah. we'll steer away from the question for everyone. Wonderful. And yeah. as they're finishing lining up, I have a last uh, fun question. If you were uh, in a band, if you had to form a band right now, just all six of you. Oh. What genre and what's the name? Come on, Janet. Oh, you do improv. Okay. This is you, Janet. All right. So we're I've already all been in a band five. with Janet. I mean, we did a duo at a like a little conference we went to. Remember? Yes. Oh, yes. And we sang a Patty Griffin song. We sang. Oh, I love to sing with Janet. Has an amazing yeah. singing voice and plays guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I, I mean, want it to be a rock band. 
because duh. I mean, I feel like sense. we might have to be the white lotuses. Ah! <laughs> ah. I th there are right. five petals, aren't there? Or is it six? You can add a petal. How many? Greg, how many oh, is on the white lotus? How many petals on the lotus? How many, how how many, many petals I'm, are on the lotus? There are one, two, three, four, five. He has a white lotus seven, tattoo. Seven. 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 Yes, I am the one. only Avatar cast member that really He's got loves a real the tattoo. show. <laughs> I just want to. Yeah. You know. I, I, so I, the I, white lotuses, lotuses, and was it rock? Oh, I mean, if they're okay with it. But. <laughs> Country of rock. course, Country Paul rock. wants it to be rock. <laughs> Ah. Rock is a very broad genre. Okay, well, thank you so much for humoring me with that question. In my head, I was also thinking you could also do a solid Earth, Wind, and Fire cover band. I know. Oh, oh, I know. Yeah. 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 Oh, good. good. Earth, right. Wind, and Fire, <laughs> and when and we kiss, water, water it's like there. fire. <laughs> Earth, Wind, and Fire, and water is just an add-on. <laughs> All right, it's in people's minds now. I'll let you take with that what you will. I love it. All right, are we, we're ready for our first question. Also fun. All right, my question is for uh, Greg. Um, toward the end of the series, when Iroh got in really good shape, how much do you think he was able to bench press? Oh, well, you know, I'm going I'm to tell you guys a fun fact. I don't, I don't like to advertise this, but the animators did indeed model buff Iroh after my own body. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. And, 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 and I, I, really, I, really, I really have to give a shout out to those uh, I was working with a very talented uh, costume designer, and they built me a fat suit so that I can wear it when I'm out in public, <laughs> so that people aren't, you know, you know, intimidated by the old guy. And I and I think they did pretty good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your Thank question. You. There wasn't an answer, but not really. Just, just but there yes. was a funny story. <laughs> uh, he could bench press uh, 300. How's that? Is that good? That's a lot. That's a Is lot. That good? You have your yeah. Yeah. Hey, this hey. question's for everybody. Uh, oh. This question's for everybody in the room because you know we're going to ask, can we hear Secret Tunnel? Yeah. Okay, here's the thing about Secret Tunnel. We're not so good with the words, so can we make it a sing-along? Let's do it. Okay, but we need you, we need you to start us off. Two, Two lovers, lovers forbidden from one, one another. another. The war divides their people, and a mountain divides them apart. Everybody, come on. <laughs> Built up as to be together. And then, I don't, I don't know the other part is, right? But then, but then it goes, secret tunnel, secret tunnel. and would love to hear this in your character's voice. Excluding your character, who oh. is your favorite character and why? In our character's voice, though. Yes. Oh, my in our favorite character is Katara, because she kicked my ass. And I would... Respect. <laughs> That's a feat in Respect. itself. Respect, yeah. Um, I'm not answering as my character, but I'll use my voice. I uh, love Zuko, because I think it's really Zuko's show. It's not Avatar, it's really... Zuko's redemption, and um, yeah, it's it's the Zuko show. I mean, you know, anyway. Whatever. Next. Okay. <laughs> Probably. Oh, Sokka, you saved. I mean, um, maybe uh, Appa, but I don't really want to snuggle. So. <laughs> My favorite character is Toph because she rocks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go with Uncle Iroh for very obvious reasons, and especially because I think we all needed him so much during the pandemic. Yeah. Well, me too. <laughs> Frankly, me too. Thank you for that question, and also soft reminder, make sure your questions are for one person on here so we can get through as many as we can. That one was easy, because like a one, one or yeah, one, yeah. one name. Hi. Hi. Uh, Hello. Do you guys think that Azula needs a redemption arc? No. <laughs> She's perfect, just She's as perfect. she is. You what know you from that episode where they're all little kids, like they prove that in that episode. She's born bad. There's yeah. no redemption. It's, yeah. it's, she's a bad seed. <laughs> I think some people are just allowed to just be evil. 
I you know? know, everything's all, so everybody's making all the villains nice and like all these origin stories where they really were really like a really good person and something bad happened to them. I'm glad that I just started out that way, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. He's crazy and needs to go down. You're a, uh, you're a quitter and a loser. Shut up. Hi, so this is for Gray. Yes. Who do you think would win in a fight between Azula and Vicky? Oh. Well, I'd bring my chainsaw, but then, but then I'd light it on fire. And she'd be gone. <laughs> oh, well, you're banished. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, my question is, what is your favorite Avatar ship from the Avatar fandom? Taizula. <laughs> I, I really wanted to see more of, uh, what is it, like Jatara? Jatara? Whatever, Jet and Katara. Jatara. Yeah. Uh -huh. T-Ro. <laughs> T-Ro. Tiro. Is it Tiro? I remember this. Tiro and Iro, yeah. Tiro. Yeah. Tiro. Um, Korasami. Thank you. I have to kneel down. I'm very tall. Hello. I have a question for Greg. So, at the time when you had to take over for Mako when he had passed away, you also had to take over for him in the Ninja Turtles film that was coming out at the same time because he didn't finish recording all his dialogue for the film. And I guess since you had taken over for that and for Aku and for Iroh, what was it like having to live up to his performance in those roles? You know, it's still, even now, as long as I've done it, the challenge was always, I'm not just taking over for this iconic role, I'm taking over for the iconic actor that played the iconic role, who everyone knows. So that's always been a challenge for me to do it. Uh, but, but, you know, the thing is, I have been literally a fan of Mako since 1977. And the way I ended up being the actor they chose to do the voice match, and you know, a lot of you have heard this story, but it's an interesting story and it's true, and I'll, I'll try to tell it quickly. Uh, I knew from an early age I wanted to be an actor, uh, and so, and I loved musicals, so I would ask for musical vinyl albums. That's what we called them back in the old days, vinyl. And my parents would give that to me for my birthday and Christmas. And in 1977, on my 17th birthday, I got an album from a musical called Pacific Overtures. It was by Stephen Sondheim, and it had just opened in New York, and man, from the minute I heard, and indeed, Mako has the very first lines on the record. You, you hear him say, Nippon, the floating kingdom. And from the moment I heard that voice, I thought, oh my gosh, this is the most unusual voice I've ever heard in my life. And then the, I listened to the rest of the musical, and it's wonderful. If you like musicals, you should give it a listen. I fell in love with this. I would sing with the entire album over and over and over again. And what I didn't know at the time was I was actually working on an impression of Mako. So that when he died in 2006 and they were looking for someone to voice match, I had actually been doing a voice match for Mako for 30 years at that time. And so, so it makes me think, you know, as I get older, you're able to see how point A leads to point B, to, you know, to point C. You can sort of see how it caused, caused an effect a little more clearly. And it amazes me. You know, Cairo says, destiny is a funny thing. You never know how things are going to work out. If my parents had given me another album that year, someone else would be sitting here right now. So it's, it's amazing to me that something as seemingly innocuous as one birthday gift among several would become by far the most important gift I would ever receive in my life. So, you know, you never know, my friends. You never know. Thank you so much. I love that story. I've heard that story so many times, but it's still so cool to me. I know, I love it. <laughs> You've, they've all heard it 10,000 times. It's funny that you, you just, like, you didn't know what your destiny was as a kid. I used to take the hall, I was like, I'm going to practice my screams. And I would take the hall pass in, like, second grade and go to the bathroom and, and just, I was screaming bloody murder. And, like, a, a custodian and a teacher, like, raced in there and they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm, and they were really mad at me, like, I mean, because they didn't see anybody around. And I was like, I'm just practicing my screams. And they were like, why? Why are you doing that? Why would you do that? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and 
Now I know. Destiny. <laughs> it's like you knew your like destiny. I just at loved that to age. scream. I just loved. It was just such a good outlet. Like I just loved to like go. I would. I would told the kids I was possessed. Great childhood in you had kindergarten. A great I told the kids I was possessed, <laughs> and I was like, they're like, no, you're not. And I was like, yes, the devil's inside me. And they're like, oh my gosh. And I was like. <laughs> Like, as a little kid, I was doing this, like, demonic laugh. And they told the teacher, like, she's possessed. She's possessed. Anyway. At, I feel I like at a, at a different and time and place, that would have been some deeper re repercussions for <laughs> saying you're possessed. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Uh, I wish I could say this to everyone, but Janet, what was... Get a little closer to the mic, hon. Okay. Uh, I wish I could say this to everyone, but Janet, what was your favorite line, and can you say it in character? Oh, boy. Um, well, it's hard because, you know, as a fan of the show, I remember the first time we see Cora and like, I was just watching it as a fan and this tiny little kid jumped out with a little pot belly <laughs> and I don't say it. Dee Bradley Baker's daughter, Cora, <laughs> says those words, but to this day, still, I'm the avatar and you got to deal with it. <laughs> is a big favorite. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we could do one line. Do we want to just do a line yeah. in our voice? Our sure. Yeah. I really like this line, and you, few of you may have heard me say it already, but look, there it is. That's what it'll sound like when one of you spots it. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. <laughs> I like, that's a sharp outfit, Chan. Sharp enough to puncture the hull of an Empire class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea because it's so sharp. <laughs> if you look for the light, you will often find it. If you look for the dark, that is all you will ever see. Okay, so, oh wait, let me back up. Like, really quick, uh, if you all lived in the world of Avatar personally, what elements do you think you would bend? That, what would element be? What element would you have? Water, I don't know, I'm very good with the flow. Azula, great. I'd have to say fire again, because I'm, you know, I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> is, is elbow bending a thing? Would that, could I do that? <laughs> Elbow bending. Yeah, it's I, a water bending. It's liquid bending. I think, I think I would actually be earth. It's a toss up between earth and fire, but I do love nature and climbing trees and all that jazz. I think I'd still be an earth bender. No, I don't have to choose. <laughs> <laughs> Question for Janet. Uh, I just contributed to a Kickstarter for a short film called But I'm a Shoe, which I believe you were involved yes. with. Yes! Uh, what was that experience like for you, and are there any other sh short projects like that you'd like to shout out? Oh, that's so nice! Yeah, I, I work, I'm, there's a short film being made right now, it's about 20 minutes, and it's about how I play this woman who, um, in order to fly more comfortably, she gets transformed into an object, and it's one of her own shoes. Um, and so I got to be a, a yellow Converse sneaker. Um, for the animation that's being done right now, and it was it was super fun. Um, it's always so fun to see. Uh, so that's that's uh, in terms of short projects, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but it is it just remains so magical and fun to see yourself a as a person who doesn't look like you, but also just as a creature or an object. For those of us who have gotten to do that, it's like you start to feel like you're stealing their voice instead of the other way around. And it's, that is a very childlike wonder feeling to be like, like, ah, that's, that's a, ah. it never goes away. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. What was the name of that short film? But I'm a shoe. But I'm a shoe. But I'm shoe. Okay, okay hello, my name is Theo, um, and my question is for Azula. Um, how do you think Azula would order a pizza in Azula's voice? How do I? Order a pizza. How would Azula order a pizza? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this opens up a whole can of worms because there was someone in my family who had sort of a mental breakdown and they started a, a 
Tumblr for me a long time ago that I wasn't, I, they were like, can I start a Tumblr for you? And I was like, sure. And so they were like, hey, you should order pizza and do all these different voices. And I was doing all these things and it was really fun because I didn't know how to work Tumblr or anything. I had a Twitter account and I had like some things, but I didn't really know how, to, how it worked. I didn't even really know what it was. And then the person kind of went off their meds and like started like, it, it, it was just like a really <laughs> dark time. They were going after like teenagers. Didn't they just ask you how you'd order pizza? What's well, happening? well, the thing is, is that I, I think they might be saying that because I, because I did that a long time ago on Tumblr. So I don't know if anybody's even, maybe I'm just talking to her, but if anybody was affected by that horrible fiasco, it was not me, but anyway. Um, but, oh gosh, I think I'd say, um, oh gosh, you know, um, I'd like some fire roasted crust, please, because you're crusty and disgusting and you're, you're banished if you don't do the pizza right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, sorry, I probably shouldn't have talked about Tumblr, but it's been a horrible scar because like some people are like adults now and they're like, you, you bullied me when I was little. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then, oh my God, somebody showed me like all these messages this person sent. It, it was like uh, oh, horrific. Gonna, horrific. Oh, I'll 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 anyway, yeah, yeah. I'll all talk right, but we'll get Tumblr. some drinks. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Oh, that's cool. cool. Hi friends. Um, first of all, thank you for everything that you've done and continue to do, of course. But my question is for Miss Gray. Um, you do a lot of panels, you do a lot of cons. Is there one question that you wish someone would ask you just so you can give a sassy remark? Oh my goodness, wow. That's true, you don't give sassy remarks very often. No, that would be highly unusual. I guess I wish they'd ask me to marry them so I could say no, never again. I've had enough names for one lifetime. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, when did it, when did you first start to see that The Last Airbender was getting this huge revival, this renaissance era where all these new fans were coming in and you were getting all this new recognition? Dude, COVID changed our life. Like, it's crazy. I mean, it I changed remember, everyone's lives, yes, but ours absolutely. most. <laughs> Suddenly it's like, it was it was number one on Netflix, and then it was like number one on Netflix again. And I think to this day, it still holds the record for the longest running show in the top 10 on Netflix, right? Um, yeah, it's Great. wild, it's wild. And it's because of you guys, you know? You guys changed our life. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, coming out to cons and seeing, you know, we would do cons before, and hey, sign some Avatar things, but now it's all Avatar and it's so freaking cool. Um, yeah, so I mean really 2020, 2020. with everybody else. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. Yeah. And now we have social media much more connected. So like before when people loved it, it was kind of missed because, you know, the first iPhone came out in 2008 or something like that. So now we had like a place to actually like connect with people and then yeah. That's like we'd never gotten rec I had never gotten recognized yeah. before and now people have recognized me just because of social media and avatar yeah. like that crazy. I don't know crazy. I I I like flying under the radar occasionally but um, and it, it's kind of fun though like I my son and I and to impress myself we went out to eat dinner and the guy that was waiting on us was like he waited till the end of the meal but he was like I just have to say like oh my god I'm just you know Azula blah, blah. and I was like oh my god and my son was like oh mom's so special <laughs> and I was like me I'm very very worthy of Mom, see, I'm someone. Oh, no. <laughs> cool, Mom, cool, Mom. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, oh my gosh. I never thought I'd be doing this in my life. Uh, um, for this, my friend Nala told me to be here, so I'm so sorry. Um, for Gray, how do you, on earth, do you recover after doing so many dramatic scenes? And like, how do you make your throat recover? Gosh. I, I do so many, I've been doing voices since I was a little kid and I just thought I was like a weird kid. I have ADHD and mm -hmm. I was always doing voices from the time I was really little. So I can't even believe this is a job. So they're just all in there somewhere. Somebody was asking me like, how do you prepare to, well jeepers you guys, there's a creepy mystery out there. Got a bunch of twerps. I'm just a little old lady just sitting on a park bench. And <laughs> My favorite. Just, and I'm a little baby. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just like they're all in there, and my voice just seems to be kind of sturdy. If it if I ever do lose it though, I I suck on little arnica tablets. So if you ever lose your voice, really, it means arnica? your cords. It means your cords are swollen. So you need to take that swelling down, take down that inflammation. So that's my little tip. But no, but there's I'm just there's a lot going on in there, probably from childhood trauma. And I, thank you, childhood trauma. <laughs> thank just, you. Just practice your screams some yeah. more. Right? <laughs> I, I was practicing so a lot at home. <laughs> anyway. 
All right, thank you so much. Hey, afternoon. Hello. 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 First of all, first of all, thank you all for everything you've done on Avatar. You're all practically inspirations for me going to voiceover myself. And um, this question is directed for the whole panel, but if only one person could answer, um, I'd probably miss Janet answering it. Um, I've been recording for auditions here and there for a couple of years now. I've been in very small projects, but never really, I guess, found that role that like really clicked with me. So, what 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 was, was your primary motivator to get you through those early stages in your voiceover career? They keep going despite recording audition after audition and like nothing sure. happened. Ooh. Well, that still happens. We still record audition after audition after audition. Guys, yeah. don't get most we, of them. We Indeed. probably uh, do 20 auditions a week and maybe book a handful of things. And, and then Gray gets the of rest them. of them. Yeah. So, right. yeah. Which is great. And you want that. <laughs> we're, very, we're very happy for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't even know if she has to audition anymore. So, no, I mean, it is, it's a marathon. And, and like Olivia was saying earlier, you know, it, it really being grounded in like believing in yourself, and I know that sounds so cheesy, but mm -hmm. a lot of it too is like having a community. And for me, the comedy community was a huge part of that. Like I get to go do improv shows that have nothing to do with whether I did a good audition that day. And having something that your mind can move on to quickly that you also care about and that isn't, you're not beholden to someone else for that joy is so important. So whether that joy is going on a hike or being with your dogs or doing improv or writing a song or whatever it is, having that rich life that it falls outside of someone else telling you whether you can or can't do something mm -hmm. is vital. And that should be true for all of us and at I, all times. Can I say, I think it's, I was taught this from, because I auditioned from a very, very, very young age. You do it and then you never think about it again. You don't talk about it, about you don't it. tell your friends about it, because then they'll be like, how was that audition that you, uh -huh. Just do it and send it off into the ether and let it go, yeah. that's it. And Dante and always says, free. you know, we always say, that was your job. Your job was you got to be that character for five minutes for one person or for ten people, and that was your performance. Mm -hmm. And maybe you get to do it again, but yeah, your pretend job like you didn't. Yeah. yeah, pretend like you didn't and just like own that moment and go, yeah, maybe I didn't connect with that role, but I did the best version of it that I could, mm -hmm. and I'm proud of that, you know? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hang in there, it's worth it. Thank you. Yes. And uh, <laughs> Miss Gray, whatever's going on between you and your mother, just know we appreciate you, okay? <laughs> we all, <laughs> the work you do, we thank you so much. If you thank really you appreciate me, follow me on Spotify. Gray Delisle <laughs> on Spotify. <laughs> thank you. My mom won't follow me, she won't even be my Facebook friend. <laughs> and she tells me stuff that other people in our family are doing. She's like, did you see on Facebook that so-and-so had a baby? I'm like, no. <laughs> no comment. No. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, thank you so, so much. Thank you for saying that. You're so sweet. It's really hilarious. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to. She's always like, I don't want to follow you back because I'm never on there, so we shouldn't be friends on there. And then she tells me almost every time I talk to her, something else is happening to somebody else. I almost feel bad that I brought her with me to this con. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Hello, what's your question? Hey, um,. My question was, in your personal opinions, if there was a fight between Iroh and Boomy, who would win? Iroh and Boomy? Yeah. Oh. Iroh, of course. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, where are we, Iroh? I see, the thing that catches me off guard with Boomy is that he's just so unhinged, like he's amazing, but I just feel like there's a couple marbles that just don't, so if, if Uncle Iroh, like is, especially buff Iroh at the end there, if everything's plugged in, like, I yeah. feel like you could, you could totally take him. Cause you know, Boomy's kind of just flying by the seat of his pants, but he's very, very talented and experienced. But if you zero in, Uncle Ira knows what's up. So I don't know, I think Uncle Ira. Come on, someone is, they often ask me the question, who would win if Iro went up against Aku from Samurai Jack? <laughs> and and the, people don't like the answer because they always say, oh, Iro would win, Iro would win. Aku is basically a demonic god of evil. He can only be defeated with the sword. So if Iroh doesn't have the sword, I, I, I am afraid Iroh will be toast very quickly. <laughs> kill the samurai. Kill the samurai. Can I get a kill the samurai, everybody? Kill, kill the, the samurai. samurai. <laughs> oh, um. Thank you. Oh, things sorry. got dark. Oh, sorry. Bless me. <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. 
Andrea. I'm a big Nickelodeon fan, so I love a lot of Nickelodeon shows. Love Avatar. My favorite episode is the series finale. My dad loves the show. One question to everyone. What's your favorite episode? The beach. The beach for me, too. Oh. The library. Tales from Ba Sing Se. Awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. Okay. And Janet, and, and, and nothing for Janet. Oh, no, I'm just, I, because of Braving the Elements, the podcast I do with Dante, I am so immersed in yeah. this, this part of the series that I, I, I might actually say the beach also. Ah. Oh, I nice. love Papa's Lost yeah. Days, too, but yeah. it, I, you got to be in the mood to have your heart shattered. Uh. Yeah, that's true. Thank gotcha. you. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Thank, thank you. Good afternoon. Hello. So I got a question for all of you. With the Avatar, Avatar show they're working on in the future, if they gave you the option to voice act again, would you like to play your original characters again or play different characters? I think with anybody at this table, uh, it, if anybody wants us to play anything, we'll be there. Yes. Absolutely. That's kind of the mentality. Yes. <laughs> so if Absolutely. you want us to work, we will work for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, how are we doing on time? Should we go into a speed round? Because nothing yeah. breaks our hearts more than if yeah, we yeah, can't yeah. get Let's to everything. We have about okay. five minutes left. Let's go. Yes. Let's do a speed round. Speed round. Are you? Okay. Okay. Oh, hi. hi. So um, I know you guys were saying that you don't want Zulu to have a redemption arc, but there is a comic book where they kind of explore her relationship with her mother. So if they ask you guys to come back, to finish the series of after the whole war, would you guys do it? Yeah. Same answer? Yeah, of course, anytime. I, as, as a fan, I don't like it when the voice changes. I'm, I'm Jean and Bayonetta, you know, the, and Bayonetta and Darling, I had to come back for that. And there, was a, there was no budget for this one movie they did, but I, as a fan, I was like, they were gonna replace me because I wouldn't do it for this terrible amount of money they offered me. <laughs> but then I was like, as a fan, I really am annoyed when I, it's not the same thing that I'm used to. So just for the fans, I would come back no matter what the price, no matter what anything was, I'll, I'll come back for it, yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, uh, I just wanted to ask if there was a concept that you guys maybe talked about or a deleted scene that you guys voiced. Oh, uh, God, get a little closer to the Yeah, mic. we can't hear right. uh, Was there a concept that you guys uh, talked about that never made it in the show that you would have liked to see? And this would be for Toph's Team love Avatar life. or Korra? Come on, Ask tough girls answer. deserve love too, right? Right? <laughs> There is stuff that I'm glad they didn't do. I heard that Azulu was supposed to be initially in some kind of arranged marriage in the beginning. I was like, oh. no, I'm so glad. She's just a <laughs> badass on her own. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. So, I'm just... Yeah, so which previous Avatar w yeah, yeah, would you like to see a show about? Oh, which other, av like, which Avatar we've heard about that we haven't seen a show about yet? Yeah, 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 which you would like to see a show about. Oh, God. A anyone that's ever been mentioned. I mean, Absolutely. Roku, I think, would be amazing. Avatar Wan, I would love to see more of. Yeah. Yes. And let's do one more question. It'll be our last question. Oh, no. But if we could have you stay so we can take a selfie with you guys in the background. And also, great. I'm going to go back. I just, there were people in my line when I had to leave for here. If there's anybody who has a burning desire for a thing, I'll be there for 30 more minutes. Yeah. No, I'm not supposed to be back at my table. If you have something, you just have to have sign in. It's your last day. I'll be back there. We'll 30 minutes. Back. Okay, we'll go last back. question. Yeah. Uh, I got to make it a good one, don't I? Uh, I hope. If your character found out they were the avatar, what do you think is the first thing that they would do? I don't even want to answer that because it would just be all over. <laughs> yeah. Go. Well, I, 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 I can't answer that. You are the avatar. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Toph, you go, you go. I, I feel like they couldn't make Toph an avatar because she'd be too powerful. Like, oh, you know, yeah. like the, 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 answer. the gods had to keep everything balanced. We're like, we're going to make you the greatest earthbender in the world. And don't you two dunderheads ever forget it. But like, if she was the avatar, it would be way too, too much power. So I, I feel like if she had all of that, she might implode. I don't know. <laughs> like, <Fair. laughs> it's just too much. Fair. <laughs> I think I'd just be lying on the beach and everybody could come with me. <laughs> I would just drink tea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so Give much, you guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. And we're going to take a big group photo real quick. Yeah.
We're gonna take one quick photo and then yeah, a couple of us will be back at our table. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all for coming.